Since I unintentionally reviewed two of this year's Best Picture nominees, I figure it's only fair that I review at least two more. That way there's half I didn't review and half that I did review. With that, I give you this year's token political biopic. Are you even more ruthless than you used to be? So we gonna do this thing or what? I mean, is this happening? I believe we can make this work. <laughs> Hot damn! Hello there everybody, it's me, the Canadian Weebuff, with a review of Vice. Vice is the biopic of Dick Cheney and follows him as he goes from White House intern to Vice President of the United States. Anna McKay did a pretty good job with The Big Short transitioning from a shade of comedies to more serious topics. The Big Short was one of my favorite movies of 2015, and this was a year that had The Force Awakens, Avengers Age of Ultron, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, The Hateful Eight, and The Revenant. So when I heard that he was doing another movie with another serious topic, I eagerly waited until Oscar season to check it out. And after seeing it, I have to ask, was 2018 really that bad a year for movies? Or did the Academy just not put any thought into their nominees for Best Picture? Whenever Christian Bale does a massive body transformation for a role, you know it's going to be good. I don't know the actual figure, but uh, he must have put on quite the weight to play Dick Cheney. The hair and makeup of course makes him look more and more like the actual Dick Cheney, but if there was one person who could give Rami Malek a run for his money for his portrayal as Freddie Mercury, it is Christian Bale as Dick. I also thought Amy Adams had a really strong supporting role in this film. Her portrayal of Lynn Cheney and the relationship they have portrays this almost Lady Macbeth influence. It's arguable that the reason why Dick Cheney is so harsh and seems so cold-hearted at times is because Lynn is telling him not to be a pushover and to be as solid as a rock. In the first scene we have with these two together, she's berating him for being a drunken idiot again, and she essentially tells him that he's got to smart it up or she's out of there. As history will come to prove, he definitely changed. I have to give credit to Adam McKay here. He's been outspoken as someone who falls more on the left side of the spectrum, but for his coverage of someone who's more on the right, I felt as if the coverage was fairly balanced and not too biased. I mean, not entirely unbiased. There are moments where they dramatically make him out to be sort of this villain, but they do set aside time to show his more human side. Something that's often forgotten about when it comes to politicians. We forget that they are human and they do make decisions for what they feel is genuinely best for their country. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Dick Cheney's an angel, but it's nice to take a step into the private side of this public figure. One part that I really enjoyed, which was near the end of the movie, is when Christian Bale as Dick Cheney stops and looks at the camera and basically says, Yeah, I'm an asshole. I did things that are considered cold-hearted and ruthless. But what would you have done? Somebody has to make the hard decisions. And if not me, then who? What would you have done if you were in my shoes? I guarantee you would have not done any better. Gotta admit, that was a little bit brutally honest. A problem I had with this movie was how it paced itself. There were parts of his life that would last for entire scenes, and then there were others that were just brushed over in a quick montage. Now I get it, if they really wanted to make it as accurate as possible, this would have been a 3 hour movie. And while the concept of a 3 hour movie is nothing new, I don't think people would want to say, oh cool, maybe I'll check out that Dick Cheney biopic, oh and that's 3 hours, never mind. It just felt like the movie was in a drag, and then speed up and then drag, and speed up, and it was a little bit tonally confused. Like there were moments that were obvious meant to be satire, but there were also moments where they turned up the drama to almost 11. In some moments you can practically hear Adam McCabe behind the camera saying, yes, this is what will get me best director. Adam McKay can do a political satire, but if it's serious drama that he wants to take a crack at, then he has some work to do. When you take something that you're good at and try to combine it with something that you've never really done before, it creates this weird tightrope versus safety net parallel. You're risking it all and the audience really wants you to succeed, and if you fall you won't seriously damage yourself, but the audience will be like, oh, well, 
That was disappointing. I enjoyed this movie, but I don't think it has quite the biting commentary that The Big Short had. The performances were great. Amy Adams and Christian Bale definitely earned their Oscar nominees. Sam Rockwell was good for the scenes he was in as Bush, but I can't help but feel like in a couple years we're going to get a Bush biopic from Adam McKay with Sam Rockwell reprising his role as George W. Bush, which is essentially what George Bush was doing during the events of Vice, with occasional scenes of Rockwell's George Bush interacting with Bale's Dick Cheney. I thought Steve Carell's performance as Donald Rumsfeld was incredibly snubbed at the Oscars because he does almost as good if not better job than Bale. Good movie, doesn't have a lot of rewatch value, and it's definitely one of the more so-so biopics out there. It does offer enough that it can be worth watching at least once in theaters. Alright, that's my review of Vice. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Leave your answer by commenting down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you're new here. And as always, this is the Canadian Movie Buff saying I hope you had a fantastic weekend at the movies. See ya!